What's up, you friggin' geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to divide radicals, but we're specifically gonna focus on rationalizing the denominator, okay? So first of all, if you ever have a perfect square in your denominator, you don't actually have to worry about that, okay? And what are perfect squares? Well, they're all these numbers right here, right? One, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, right? We can keep going. So if we ever had one of these numbers, one of these perfect squares inside of a radical in the denominator, you don't have to worry about that, okay? So for example, if I had something like one over the square root of four, we don't have to rationalize this. We don't have to do anything crazy to this, right? Because we know what the square root of four is, right? The square root of four is simply equal to two. So then this fraction right here would just reduce down to one over two, okay? But if you ever have anything else inside of this radical, let's say a three, then we have to rationalize it. Okay, so rationalizing the denominator just means we're getting rid of this radical symbol, okay? And the way that you get rid of this radical symbol is just multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction right here by this denominator. Okay, so since we have the square root of three right here, we're gonna multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of three, okay? And then we can basically simplify this. So on top, we have one times the square root of three, which is simply equal to the square root of three. And then on the bottom, we have the square root of three times the square root of three, which is equal to three, okay? So then your answer right here would just be the square root of three over three, right? You can totally have a radical in the numerator like this. That's totally fine. It's just, we can't have it in the denominator. Okay, and just to clarify what we did here in the denominator, again, I said the square root of three times the square root of three is equal to just three, right? So to make sure that's clear, let's just use numbers that we know. So let's say we took the square root of four and multiplied it by the square root of four, okay? Well, what is the square root of four? Well, it's just equal to two, right? So then here, we're, we really just have two times two, right? And two times two is equal to four, right? So that's why the square root of four times the square root of four is also equal to four, okay? So the square root of three times the square root of three is just three, okay? And it works like that with any number, right? So the square root of 69 times the square root of 69 is just equal to 60 nice. Okay, so here we have eight over three root six. Okay, so this one's obviously a little bit different, right? Because we're multiplying by this three out here, okay? But the, still, the only thing we have to multiply by on the top and the bottom is this radical, okay? So we're gonna multiply the top by root six and the bottom by root six, okay? So then simplifying this, on top we're gonna have eight times square root of six, right? So we're gonna have eight root six on top and on the bottom we have this three right here, so we'll bring that over. And then here we have the square root of six times the square root of six and that's just equal to six, right? So then here we're multiplying by six. Now we can kind of cancel some things out, right? So on top we have an eight and on the bottom we have a six. So we can simplify that, right? So eight over six is the same thing as four over three, okay? So then if we simplify this one more time, on top we're gonna have four times the square root of six, right? Four times the square root of six. And on the bottom, we're just left with three times three, which is equal to nine. Okay, so then your final answer right here would be four root six over nine. Okay, so here we have four over four plus the square root of two, right? So as you can see, we basically have an expression in the denominator now, right? Because we have this four plus attached to the radical essentially, right? So the thing we have to do here is a little bit different. We have to multiply by the conjugate, all right? Maybe you've heard that before, maybe you haven't, but all that means is we're gonna multiply by this exact same thing on the top and the bottom, but the only thing you're gonna change is the sign, okay? So since we have a plus sign right here, we have to change it to a subtraction sign, okay? So that means we're gonna multiply, again, the top by four minus the square root of two, and we're going to multiply the bottom by the same thing, four minus the square root of two. Okay, so again, if we multiply this out, so on top, we're gonna have four times four minus the square root of two, right? So four times four minus the square root of two. And on the bottom, we're going to have four plus root two times four minus root two, right? So the way you simplify this right here is by foiling, right? First, outer, inner, last, right? So we're gonna go first, which is 
16. And then we're going to go outer. So 4 times negative root 2 is equal to negative 4 root 2. Okay? And then we're going to go inner. So 4 times root 2 is equal to positive 4 root 2. And then we're going to go last, right? So here we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is just equal to 2, right? But the thing is here, this one's a positive and this one is a negative. So a positive times a negative is a negative, right? So then this would be negative 2, right? So here we're going to have minus 2. Okay, now we can start simplifying some things. So here on top, you might be tempted to distribute this 4 into the parentheses, okay? But again, you kind of want to just leave this separate for now because we might be able to cancel some stuff out, okay? So I'm just going to leave the top like this for now. So 4 times 4 minus root 2, okay? And then the bottom, we can simplify some things, all right? So here we have 16 minus 2. 16 minus 2 is equal to 14, right? So we're going to have 14 right there. And then right here, we have negative 4 root 2 plus 4 root 2, okay? So since both of these have a root 2, right? They both have a root 2 right there. They're basically like terms, okay? So it's almost like saying negative 4x plus 4x, okay? That's one way you can kind of think about it. So negative 4x plus 4x, that would just cancel out and go to 0, right? So it's the same thing over here. So negative 4 root 2 plus 4 root 2, those just cancel out and go to 0, okay? So then in the denominator right here, all we're left with is 14, okay? And now we can uh, reduce some things here, right? So 4 over 14, we can reduce that down to 2 over 7, right? So then here on top, we'll have 2 times 4 minus the square root of 2, right? So 2 times 4 minus the square root of 2, and on the bottom, we just have a 7. Okay, so then that's as simplified as we can get it, All right? So that'd be your final answer right there. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.